Well, that, we don't want those kind of people. There's some <laughs> weird fetish going on. try to act like you know what I do better than I know what I do. I mean, I'm here um, too. <laughs> um, it's just a little sunny out here, by the way. Sunny? Yeah, like it's so cloudy, but like... It's like bright enough that like, I feel like I need my sunglasses, but not really. Yeah, I really, I really don't understand why Lincoln doesn't push some of their, I don't know if it's their marketing or what, but the interior materials, the design, the look of these things, it's really great. Um, and they just don't seem to get the love that they deserve. Lincoln Corsair. I, I don't like that name, by the way. What is a you Corsair? You don't like Corsair? People love the fact that Lincoln has names for their cars. All cars have names. No, they don't. Most luxury cars what? are the like, LS924, oh, oh, yeah, no one I don't hate that. that it's a name, I just thought, what's a Corsair? What does that mean? It's a type of ship. They're all based on ships and planes. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it all is right. cool. Corsair's awesome. I take awesome it back, name. I just didn't know the, yeah, it's I didn't Corsair, know the Corsair, Nautilus, Aviator, Navigator. I know the Navigator. Yeah, they're awesome. I would drive, I want a Navigator. Well, hey Lincoln, <laughs> you want a Navigator to test? Yeah, I got, so I could buy one. So you can buy me one. Um, I love the way the exterior of this car looks. I like the grill. It's kind of funky with those yeah, little... Yeah, it's actually uh, special to the hybrid model. Really? Yeah. It's, Why? A, it's slightly different. Oh. Probably for so enhanced cooling and stuff for batteries and things. Oh, okay. Um, it looks really cool. I hate this color. What is this? Like plumish, brownish? Yeah, it's not the best. Plum? It's kind it's... of a caviar. Oh, it's not cute. Um, so I don't love the color. But I love the way it looks. I think it looks great for a small SUV. It looks nice. It looks fancy. It looks like it's $68,000 Lincoln, you know? It doesn't um, look like a Ford Escape. No. Which is, is what that it's what based it's, on. No, it, oh, oh. No, no, it no. doesn't at all. It, it, that's good, right? Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Um, no, I really like it. So I would absolutely agree with you. I actually think the Lincoln Corsair is really good looking. I think all Lincolns are really good looking. Honestly, it's a bit of a shame that like, more people don't buy them. And I know maybe there's some like reliability issues and stuff like that. I'm just talking about from purely an aesthetic standpoint and a luxury standpoint, because this thing is based on the Ford Escape, which is not one of my favorite looking vehicles. And the way that the Corsair looks both outside and in, considering it's based on a Ford Escape is kind of incredible, to be honest with you. Um, so I, I got no complaints. I'm 100% in agreement with you. that This thing looks fantastic for what it is, um, you know, especially considering its bones. Lincoln does a great job hiding that. I realize I like the side view too. I just yeah. really like everything about this car. It's like a cute little compact SUV. It's not super roomy, but um, it's real cute. And the back end, I like the like strip of lights or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think it looks really good. Look at that. First try. <laughs> First try. Because I've been driving it all week. Yep. Um, the interior. What is that thing? What is what thing? That black thing. Is that yours? No, that's the charging bag. Oh, I wondered all week what that was. Um, the back, the back end has lots of space back here. I think is this is it a lot for? Uh, it's not bad. I think it's twenty eight cubic feet. What is normal for this kind of? Uh, usually around twenty five to twenty eight, like you okay. know, somewhere in the mid twenties. Um, especially if you had the front row, like if you just needed to drive somewhere and carry stuff, right? If this, because does the seat go down? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think it's a good amount of space back here. I like it. I like that it's electric. I like. The little key fob was nice. It had lots of little things. Oh, and it beeps. Oh, I like how it beeps when you back up. Yeah, they have lots of sounds in yeah. this. Uh, but yeah, I think it looks great. I really like it. So you're a fan of the style. I am, 100%. Okay, so it's always on me to do the powertrain stuff because you don't yeah, want to be yeah, you don't want to be bothered memorizing the boring stuff. And this is where in the Lincoln Corsair there's some pros and cons. This is the plug-in hybrid Lincoln Corsair, which means you get 28 miles of EV range. And that's not bad, but remember that the Lexus NX 
450 H plus. I don't know, their numbers are getting a little bit ridiculous now, but let's just say the Lexus NX plug-in hybrid goes significantly farther. It gets like oh, 30, the uh, yes, almost the exact same. So the Lexus NX gets like 37 miles of EV range. And then once it switches over to hybrid mode, it's more efficient. You're getting kind of like mid to high 30s. And this gets, we've been averaging about 32 to 34 miles per gallon. So the Corsair is good, but the Lincoln NX is better. And this is a 2.5 liter uh, four cylinder with an electric motor making 266 total horsepower. So it's not slow, but again- Why do you say making horsepower? Because that's what motors I mean, like and engines do. Say, but... they, they make horsepower, they provide horsepower, okay. they they give you horsepower. Okay. Is that any of those like okay. they kind of work right. for you? Right. Um, so the, the bad news again here is that that's good, but then the Lincoln, the Lincoln, the Lincoln Corsair is good. The Lexus NX is better. It's faster because it's based on the RAV4 Prime kind of setup. And the RAV4 Prime is surprisingly solid numbers. And if you prefer the Lincoln styling, oh, power plant? yeah, power plant, like it's the thing that's powering the car. Yeah. It's like a little mini power okay. plant inside the oh, car. Really? There's is that like what people call yelling at her child over there? Really um, yeah, well, I mean, yes, people call it power plant, motor, engine, they're all oh, okay. technically different. But this is a solid entry. But the problem is the NX is better. I think it's going to boil down for a lot of you guys to two things. One, quality. Do you want that Lexus reputation? Two, the other thing is styling. I think the Corsair is a better looking awesome, vehicle yeah. outside and most notably inside. inside. So the seat motor's back when you stop, but I'm six foot six and it's not hard with these amazing seats. You got memory seats too, by the way. But with the seat see controls here? up here, you have like Sorry, tons see that? See of- that direct oral? Yeah, 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 I like yeah. that little Thank like you. cutaway Thank there, you. yeah. Um, you got tons of adjustability. This is fully loaded. It's almost $69,000. So <laughs> it is a lot of money. Unfortunately, that's more expensive than the Lexus NX plug-in hybrid. So there's that. But this has the Revell. Oh, this looks better. Yes, looks better. It's got a better interior. It's got the Revell audio system, which sounds fantastic. It's got this 13 inch infotainment screen, 12 inch gauge cluster. Now my one complaint, and we'll get to the more of this in the driving portion. Um, my one complaint is that I don't find it as intuitive, as intuitive, as, it, in as intuitive. intuitive to use as the Lexus system, for example. The gauge cluster and the infotainment screen both look great, but you're gonna have to get used to it. Um, also, some of the controls for the climate control or whatever are on the screen. I like Whereas, that. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. Some competitors still leave the physical dials. I think it's better to have the dials for the adjustment and then the kind of menu settings on the screen, but it's not bad. Like, it does a good job. The animations are cool. Sync, which is the basis for this is- Oh, you know what I like when you, when you turn the car, when you get in the car and then the screens look like the galaxy yeah yeah it does like a lot of cool animations yeah. um sync is really good i i'm a fan of sync I, I like ford and lincoln stuff here um and so all of this stuff looks and feels very premium a lot of your touch points they've masked the ford escapeness some people complain that if you go a little bit lower it's still hard plastic I really don't have a problem with that when the stuff you're touching feels so high say, quality. That seems a bit yeah, and the overall design aesthetic of this interior looks awesome. This color combo on the inside looks phenomenal. I like it. The exterior color we don't no. love, but the color combo in here with this like wood trim, it's probably fake, but it looks really nice. Like this is a great place to be. So for the interior, but when I just sat down, I was like, oh, this seat's super comfortable. Um, don't you think? Yeah, they have good seats. Yeah, good seats. And you can adjust it like a hundred billion different ways. And I, but you know what I don't love is that the seat adjusters up there, I guess, cause it's got all the different, you want to be able to see, but it's kind of fancy. It's I like want it to be down does. here, but I mean, I don't hate it. Um, the steering wheel is great. I, it's super nice. Um, materials. I, I mean, all the material, like everything you can touch is like super nice. It's super soft and looks like, looks nice. Um, it's got the little charge plate here, which I yep. love. Fits the stand. Yeah. Fits two stands, actually. In the front. The cup holder, not in the back. We'll, we'll get talk, to that. We'll get to that. Uh, that was upsetting. I really like the giant sunroof. Yeah. Except I don't like that it has the bar in the middle. It, can it, why isn't it just one giant sunroof? Probably for structure. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Um, you know what weird thing is I really like is the rear view mirror. Why? I don't know. It's like bigger and flatter and it doesn't have like the black edges. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it just looks fancy. Um, this screen is giant. Yeah, it's over 13 inches. I like the little piano key thing and how it like kind of sticks out right here and it's got your little, your little buttons. 
I like it. The gear selector. The gear selector. But aren't they piano keys? Isn't that what well, you Well, yes, they're them? supposed to look like piano keys. Yeah, I like that. Um, the materials are great. Like I said, it's super roomy up here. I like it. I love the interior. Big fan? Big fan. Big fan. What about the back? Not as big of a fan. Okay, so this seat has like motored itself back or whatever when I stopped the yeah, car. Yeah, because it goes back. When yeah, so this yeah. is further back than like I would drive, which is further back than 99% of people would drive. Right. And I don't have a ton of space right now, but I did drive back here yesterday when you were in front of me and we drove like 30-ish minutes both yeah. ways. Um, and it, it wasn't super roomy. I had my purse with me, so my purse was like down here in the footwell, and I just didn't, I don't know. I, I, I don't love the back seat. I don't think it has a ton of room. It's a so, small SUV. It's a very small SUV. But I guess, I don't know, I'm like, if I'm getting an SUV, I want a big old SUV with tons of space. But I guess that's just me. Like, if you don't want a car, but you don't want a giant SUV, this is a very nice small SUV with, again, not much space, but the seats are very comfortable out here. It doesn't fit the Stanley. As you can see, it kind of rolls around, which I wasn't happy with yesterday. I had to hold my Stanley oh, no. the whole way. Oh, no. Um, but the sunroof problems. is beautiful back here, and you do have a whole lot of headspace. Um, head yeah. 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 So it's not roomy this way, but it's roomy this way. What about me? Can I fit? Right now? No. We'll Should we see. try? Sure. All right, ready, go. You do not, in fact, fit back here. I do not fit back here. Now, the seat is motored back, but if I had the seat adjusted from where you I would like to would sit, I still wouldn't fit very well. One of the things you have to realize, and this is where this category gets a little bit weird, is that small luxury SUVs are, are like cars. priced high because they're luxury SUVs, but they don't really have a lot more space than cars, car. like you yeah. said, you know? And so you got 28 cubic feet of cargo space, which is good but like we had the toyota crown recently that had 18 cubic feet of cargo space which was a lot for a sedan you had a roomy back seat you got a lot of luxury features and you got a lot of the stuff that you find on a lexus and that thing cost 50. this thing costs 69 thousand well, dollars so good yes but it does look good and so you got that going for I it i think it so, looks 69 thousand dollars good honestly yeah i really i really don't understand why lincoln doesn't push some of their i don't know if it's their marketing or what but the interior material Materials, the design, the look of these things, it's really great. Um, and they just don't seem to get the love that they deserve because this is a really pleasant place to be as long as you're not trying to fit in the back seat. We are in the Lincoln Corsair. Yes. Is that how I say it? Plug-in hybrid. Plug-in hybrid, which already a negative for me. I don't like having to plug a car in. Well, tell everybody why. Because you don't want to be bothered with having to do anything. What do you mean I don't want to be bothered to have to do anything? Like, it requires I don't want to be bothered one... to have to plug in my car. Exactly. Yes. But I don't think that's... I, I like a just regular hybrid that I don't have to plug in. But I do not want one that I have to plug in. So that is just a personal thing that I don't like. The Lincoln Corsair. The driving... I love the way the gas pedal works. You love I, the way the gas pedal works? Yes, because I, there's, I do not like the brake pedal. Okay. So I there's a little grabbiness. Only halfway like this car because I when you're driving, I enjoy it. I enjoy the way it gases, it has good power. It gases. What you know what I mean? <laughs> it has good power, it handles well. I like all of that. What I do not like is the brakes. They are super grabby, I think. Uh, the, only you, as it comes to a stop. I just think it's well, it's not when you're brake. I mean I don't understand. <laughs> I think the brakes are too grabby. Like if you put the brakes on right now, they're not too grabby. It's as the car is coming to I, a stop. No, that's your opinion. This is this is my opinion. I think they're a little grabby. Okay, you think they're always too grabby? Always, okay. yes. I don't love the way they feel. And what I really hate is what you said they don't they don't creep. It doesn't creep. Like well, I will pull into a park. Yeah, Whoa! Well, watch out for that guy. Buddy. That guy's. I will pull into a parking space and yeah, so, I'll be like, you know, too far behind. Like I want right. to pull up a little bit. And normally if you just let off the brake, it would pull up. It, this does not do that. It literally stops. Like you are well, stopped, you are not going anywhere. It's got the brake hold feature, yeah. which apparently you can't, can't turn be off? turned off. I don't know. Comment down below if you know, because I looked all over this thing and to try to find a brake hold button. So if there is one. Cause you have to gas to creep up a little bit, which then, then you're like jerking. And I'm like, I literally just wanted to scoot up a foot in my parking spot and I can't do that. 
because this car does not creep at all. Well, so, if it has a brake hold function, it should be much easier to engage. In yes. This engage. Well, guess what? As these things often do, I came back to film the B-roll, and on the way back, I found the brake hold. Now, that's a good thing, because it solves one of our complaints with the way that this thing drove, and I assumed there had to be a way to turn off the stupid brake hold feature. But where it was located, it's kind of silly. So when I put it back into main menu on the infotainment screen, I'm talking like main menu, like all the way back to the original, there's a number. where I kept looking for it. You can only see that driver menu when you go all the way back to the original main menu. So, yes, that's good. Their brake hold can be turned off and it drives more normally. But Lincoln, why does it just put a button? Like everybody else, just put a button down there. That was kind of dumb, but I'm glad it's off. Yes, so I do not like that at all. So the brakes, I don't love. I don't know if I could look past it, honestly. That's how much I don't like them. But other than the braking, so if the braking doesn't bother you, like it doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me. No, it doesn't. Um, I mean, I get what you're saying, but it's not. I think as you much you might like this car. I love the way the interior looks. Um, yeah, it's got a pretty it's great. It's super interior. nice. The seats are super nice. You can literally adjust them like 27 different ways. Yeah, this one's fully loaded. Like it's got the little leg thing that you can like, like you can basically like make your seat longer if you want more leg yeah. support and you know lift it up or down or whatever like. Um, it's got like lumbar stuff, like it's all sorts of stuff. So the seats are super comfy. I like all the buttons. I like the little piano key, um, park, reverse, neutral buttons. It's the gear selector. Gear Why, selector. You were, you've been struggling on gear selector lately. What, when, I don't the think whole, you've ever told me it's called a gear selector. The whole Honda Pilot review, you're like, the buttons for park, neutral, reverse. Whatever, I don't, I don't think you've ever, I don't think we've ever talked to, called it a gear selector. I think we might have to throw the red flag on that. No, if, let's do it, <laughs> and I'm gonna win, because you've never told me it's a gear selector. Um, but I like how it's like piano keys. It kind of, it's kind of weird, it's kind of hard to find it, at first, like, not hard to find it, but like, kind of feels awkward at first, like, to be reaching over here, but, um, but I like it. The ride is very smooth, I think. Um, I mean, it's a little bouncy. Is that? It's trying to cushion you. Yeah, which I don't, I like, I like a little bit it's of It's being a, luxurious. Yeah, it feels luxurious. Um, I, I, the heads up display is great. Um, oh, it's got a huge heads up. Yeah, it's got a big one. It shows you more stuff, I feel like, than it usually shows yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it's really um, good. Which I really like. I don't know, what is this picture of the car in here for supposed to do? Oh, that's for when you, uh, so this one I believe has the hands-free, like, full, Autonomous, not fully autonomous. Don't legally, it's not fully autonomous, but almost autonomous driving. Oh. So that's where all of the uh, advanced cruise control stuff would be. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I haven't done any of that. Assuming Absolutely. we could figure out if this thing does creep or not. Right. Would but that, as of how right much now, would that change your opinion. Oh, a lot. A lot. So you would like this car. Oh yeah. What about at sixty-eight thousand dollars? I don't like that. <laughs> But <laughs> I don't like that. But I mean, it does look like a sixty-eight thousand dollars car. I think. Yeah, the interior is pretty great. Yeah, the I, interior, I like it looks Lincoln's super, interior. Um, feel it. I, I do feel like I'm driving a luxurious car. Which yeah, they're doing a good job with for that. sixty-eight thousand. That's what I want to feel like. Yeah, so. it's got good ambiance. And I do feel like that. I actually kind of like the way that the Corsair drives. Uh, the ride is pretty good. It's very cushy, but it does not rock. It doesn't wallow too much. It gives you a nice initial kind of cush from road imperfections and then settles back down again. Very kind of Land Rover-y, so I appreciate that. Um, it also isolates you. It's pretty quiet in here. Yeah. You feel well isolated from like bad road texture. So there's a sophistication to the ride that kind of feels a appropriate for the Corsair's price point. So right away, that's something that impresses me about that. Now, let's address what- Do you what, not hate the brakes? I was gonna say, let's address what you said about the brakes. The brakes are a little grabby, okay? There's two complaints that we have. Uh, the grabbiness doesn't bother me as much. I sort of acclimate to that stuff say, faster. I've gotten used to it. Yeah, it, I drive a lot of cars, and so it, it's easier to kind of get used to it, um, but the brake hold function is currently turned on this vehicle and I'm not 100% convinced that it can be turned off. I've looked all over the place, so if there- If it can, it's confusing. If it can, it's just it should stupid. It should be 100% just somewhere where you can just press a button. That's another complaint I have ergonomically. 
there are just a few areas where I wish things were simpler. For example, good uh, thing, the little joysticks that are on the steering oh, yeah, wheel here, those. those are great. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. High five to whoever came up with that idea at Lincoln. These little joysticks are great. And once you get used to it, the gauge cluster, this beautiful gauge cluster, it works really well. Um, I wish that we could have actually taken it on a trip to try out the Lincoln, It's I think it's called Active Glide in Lincoln talk. It's Ford's Blue Cruise system, so semi-autonomous driving, but Active Glide is Lincoln's version. And it you looks- say it like that every time? Oh yeah, you have to, because it's a Lincoln. You have oh. to be like, hey, I'm about to turn on Active Glide, oh, okay. but keep your hands on the wheel. Um, so I like the look of everything. This 13 inch screen is massive um, and it looks good. The graphics are good. If you put it on like home mode or whatever, I don't know. It's there. Doing? I don't know that's what I'm doing. Yeah, graphics. point at me. It's not point at that. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, that's just the normal screen, but it looks great. And the climate controls on the bottom are okay. You don't mind them. I, I like wish, that it's on there. yeah, I wish they were not. It shows a little graphic thing that comes up that shows you making them higher or lower. Like yeah, that, that's cool when you change the thing yeah. and when you do it by your finger, it has little sparkles and stuff. So, I mean, Lincoln's doing a good job getting kind of the luxury stuff right, like kind of making you feel sparkle. good. Yeah, of course, little sparkles. It's got great ambient lighting. And Ooh, then the I fact, do like the ambient lighting. Yeah, the I'm ambient sure lighting that, looks yeah. really good. And the fact that they simplified the center stack and give you a little bit more space in the console and stuff, that's really appreciated. So, my thing is, I'm, I'm like, Lincoln, this is a great interior. The heads-up display is beautiful. It's gigantic. It's, it's probably one of my favorites in oh, all the cars. Oh, this is probably one of the best heads-up displays yeah, in any it. car that we've ever tested. Like, it's gigantic, crystal clear. It's just such a win. Yeah. And so it makes me wonder, it's like, Lincoln, you are getting so many of these things right. Like, these cars need to be promoted better, advertised better, marketed better. I don't know. Yeah, because know. honestly, I'd never heard of this car before you had it. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it showed up in the driveway, and you're immediately smitten with the looks. The interior looks great. The ride is comfortable. There's so many things to like about this vehicle. Um, the steering is decent for a luxury car hybrid. It's actually a little oddly quick, like off-center. It's a little bit more responsive than you would think. But this is a very pleasant car to drive. And these seats, because this is fully loaded, these seats are very comfortable and you can adjust them in every which way and you can massage, you get massages while you're in here. So You didn't tell me that, I'm a little mad. Because I've wasted a whole Well, you had the, the car and uh, and I didn't realize this was the fully loaded one and it comes with the massaging seats. Yeah, and they're pretty good. Like really like, missed out yeah, they're pretty good massaging seats. So this from behind the wheel feels appropriately luxurious. It feels the way a luxury car should, it feels the way a Lincoln should, but it feels the way a luxury car should. And a now, luxury a luxury Lincoln. Well, Lincoln wants to be a luxury car and this feels good. I prefer this feel from behind the wheel than I do in something like the Lexus NX or the Acura RDX. Like this is a cooler place to be with a kind of more luxurious vibe. And I think that Lincoln's onto something. You know, I, I wish that they would, uh, we would see a little bit more of these. More people would give them a try. I think you might be pleasantly impressed. Surprised. Or pleasantly surprised. And impressed. Impressed and then both. pleasantly surprised. How about just both simultaneously? <laughs> so, final thoughts? Lincoln Corsair? Okay, final thoughts. For the exterior, I'm gonna go like... Oh, we're just jumping into the ratings. Right? Well, Isn't that yeah. what, that's what I do. I mean, yeah. Okay, don't don't try to act like you know what I do better than I know what I do. I mean, I'm here um, too. <laughs> yeah, but if I want to change it up, that's like my prerogative. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. Um, it's just a little sunny out here, by the way. Sunny? Yeah, like it's so cloudy, but like it's like bright enough that like I feel like I need my sunglasses, but not really. Um, I did get new glasses though, by the way. Oh, I'm sure everybody wants to know that. Well, I didn't know if they noticed, you know, they're kind of cute. Um, so I love the exterior of it. I'm going to go like... An eight and a half. Okay. Maybe. I think it looks really nice. It. I love the front end. I like. The, I love the exterior of this car. I think it looks super nice. I don't love this color, so don't buy this brownish plumish caviar <laughs> color, whatever it's called. Do you know the actual name of it? No, but it's not great. It's not great. It's very boring. Yes. I, I would like to see it in a more fun color. It would look, but well, it would look good in like a gray or something. It would look very like premium. Gray. Yeah, like a dark gray. Like a steely gray. Yeah, there you go. The interior, I just think it's not space, spacious enough. Well, it's a small SUV. But it's a small SUV, so. What about style materials? Oh, I love all of that. I love all that. I think it looks, I love the way this car looks. So interior looks wise, I'm gonna go like a nine. Yeah. Yeah, I You're think it looks fan. great. I am a big fan. The, but it's kind of small. 
So just keep that in mind. But I guess if you're buying a small SUV, you know it's kind of small. I think they right? get it. Um, Drive-wise, I'm going to give it like seven, which seems seems tough. But I hate that it does not creep. I need to be able to creep. That is a very important thing for me. So if we can get that creep thing figured out, then I, I would definitely go up some. Um, I don't love the brakes, but I am getting more used to them. So like maybe I'll creep up to a seven and a half. Um, I love the way it like actually drives though. I like the, the way it feels like, on the yeah. road. I like the ride. Yeah, it was comfortable when I was in the back seat. I just don't love the brakes and then the no creep. The no so creep overall, is real bad for me. Um, overall, I'm gonna go like an eight, eight and a half. Okay. I liked it. I liked it. Small SUVs are not my jam, um, but for a small SUV, I think this is a really good one. And now it is expensive. $68,000. That's like a lot. I feel like you could get like a lot more car for that, but it probably wouldn't be like as nice as this, right? Or a plug-in hybrid. Or a plug-in hybrid. Oh, is that why it's so expensive? That's part of it. That's part of it. Um, but I, I love it. I really do like it. So overall, I think the Lincoln Corsair is a solid entry into this like small luxury SUV class. You love the way it looks on the outside and the inside. I really like the way it looks on the outside and the inside. I think that there is a lot to like about this. Personally, I really like plug-in hybrids and I like that we're starting to see these in the luxury category. I'm not fully convinced though that that's the justification for some of these insane prices. Because like you said, 68, $69,000 for this thing is a lot is a lot. So maybe the best spot to get a Lincoln Corsair and even some of its competition is sort of in that mid-level range where you have kind of the normal powertrain with some of the options that you really, really care about. This one, keep in mind, is maxed out. This is fully loaded. So you're getting everything for 69 grand. But then again, you can get a lot of larger cars nicely equipped for that price as well. And as hybrids sort of proliferate out and become more and more and more common, um, I, I think that you would have kind of a hard choice buying something like this over a larger, maybe slightly less equipped, decent hybrid model. I think the Corsair makes a good case for itself. And I don't know why Lincoln doesn't push some of these models a little bit harder because they are absolutely on the right path. I just have a few nitpicks about the driving experience and maybe just a few about the ergonomics. But overall, this is a pretty solid car. And I'll let you kind of take us out as usual because I never get to finish the videos anymore. Well, they'd rather see me than you. Yeah, probably. Take us out in style. Yeah. Um, if you want to see more of you sneezing, you know what? Tune into the channel. Maybe they do. Maybe there are... Well, that we don't want those kind of people. <laughs> There's some weird fetish going on. Okay. Um, if you're enjoying our reviews and you want to see more of me... Not sneezing. You know what? If you want to see more of me having to deal with his sass, then like, subscribe, ring the bell. Till next time. Till next time. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Why did you hit record before you said that? <laughs> God, you're such a turd pocket sometimes. Okay. All right. So, thoughts on the way. Hang on. Clearly not ready. This happening in multiple videos is just going to prove that I was right in the Toyota Crown video. No, I'm clearly uh, there's something the allergic time. to something at home. Yeah, so that you should go to a doctor and find out what you're allergic to. Well, it's probably what are they going to find? The one small thing at the house. <laughs> I think any one of the audience coming. would be like, this is not normal for a human oh to sneeze gosh. every weekend. It's not every weekend. Well, they're going to think it's every weekend. <laughs> we film every weekend, and this is the third or fourth video that you've had sneezing Oh, it's attacks. the second one. No, because it'll be in the Honda one, Oh, because we did two we today. Two that doesn't count. Day. It is the second day. All right. Okay. Nope. Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's a lot of bloopers. Yeah. So fun. A lot of blooper footage. You know what? <laughs> back end is like. Whoa, sleep. I wasn't even going yet. Hold your horses. How there. was I supposed to know? I'm excited to talk about the back the end. Because the camera wasn't even pointing um, at As we were you. walking, I really, I really.